Jen and I uh, recently watched this documentary on Netflix. I don't know if you ever watched it. It's called The Social Dilemma. I, are you serious? Are you making yeah. a joke? No, I'm being serious. I, I thought this would be great. This. I, I tweeted about it and I put it on Facebook. Okay. I asked if anybody had seen it. I just watched it yesterday. Okay, so let's let's unfold on this because number one, I think this is a good thing to talk about just in general. But number yeah. two, I think as a parent in the, talking about social media and, and the idea of our kids getting on social media, uh, that is also something that has really pondered on my head since watching that. So yeah. uh, Social Dilemma is a docudrama, I guess you could say. It, yep. it, it's got statistics. It's got uh, real people that have worked in the industry of social media. Uh, and then it also plays on this uh, f- drama with this family and their use of social media itself in the inner workings of social media it's on netflix uh there are parts of it that i absolutely love there are parts of it that i didn't really care about um but i I think if you're interested with social networking itself it's worth a watch uh what was it's it's weird because when i watched it i thought of you and i i don't know why my head you know just went to that but i you're you're not reviews, but your your opinions on things, I I value. I guess you you've got you, you analyze stuff in a, a uh, good way. I appreciate you saying that. I'll take that as a compliment. Yes, yeah, that was a compliment. Uh so to to me, the first thing I thought when I watched it was I immediately compared it in my brain to Big Tobacco and the fast food. <laughs> yes how they manipulated people for years, for decades, without people having any idea they were being manipulated on a deeper level than just your average advertising. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever wondered why pretty much every fast food restaurant, can you name a fast food restaurant that doesn't have the color yellow or red in it? Like together or separately? They either have red, yellow, or both. Can you name one that doesn't? Maybe Taco Bell? No, Taco Bell definitely has yellow. <sighs> the only yellow. one I could think of was White Castle, but even now I think White Castle now has yellow in it. I think they have yellow in the castle somewhere, don't they? Like a flag. Yeah, I think, I think they do. I think they do now. There was a time where they were just blue and white. But the thing, the idea is that okay. it's manipulating you on a level deeper than you re- recognize, a subconscious level. And I've always been interested in that concept because it's unfair it's not fair when you're fighting a battle that you don't even know you're involved in and social media is that way there's so many little things happening with social media where you're being manipulated but you don't even know the manipulation is happening yeah and the social dilemma is so powerful because the people making it know what they're doing it's not unintentional it'd be different if it was just an unintended consequence but this is the intended consequence (laughs) manipulation yeah. of you and your actions and so when it comes to my kids there's no way there's no way my preteen children would ever get this i mean my kids are 10 and 8 at the mm. moment but preteens there's no way especially when they showed that suicide rate oh yeah preteen girls and teen girls no way yeah no way and <clears throat> i understand the desire especially when your friends and family are there but it just, man, it's eye-opening. For people who are in the industry, the guy, the guy from Pinterest is really great. Mm-hmm. He said, he, said he, he was working at Pinterest. He'd come home. I don't want to give too much away. It's all right, yeah. But he'd come home, and he's hiding in his pantry on Pinterest. Yeah. He's the dude who makes <laughs> Pinterest. <laughs> and he knows what they made it to do, and he can't escape it. It's yeah. just, it's crazy, man. It was crazy to me. And I got to give a shout out to my friend Reza and to my friend Grant. They both told me to watch it a long time ago. They've been telling me for a long time to watch it, and I just never did. And I finally got around to watching it. And, uh, man, it was powerful. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought it was interesting that they never made the correlation between fast food, big tobacco, and um, social media. I, I guess I never really thought of it until you mentioned that. And that's genius because it's exactly what it is. It's it's the same principle as that. Which, you know, leads me to the thought. And since I've watched it, I've been pondering, do I delete my personal accounts? Should I, should I just delete it and get rid of it? Because people don't need to see my personal life. 
And it's scary to think about, like, the idea of, of, I don't know, I guess your stuff is on the internet forever. Yeah. It's on there forever. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't believe it, just check out your Instagram memories. Oh, I've done that. Yeah, it's terrifying. It, it's, it's out there. But it's also, I forget, one of the guys, I, I guess they all intended, you know, so, for social media to be a good thing, but then it's flipped on to this, it's, it's turning into a monster itself. No, it is a monster. Yeah. It's not turning into anything. It is a monster. It's, but it's a catch-22 because what if, you know, like, like your podcast, like this podcast, like any kind of form of content creation, any kind of business or anything, uh, why wouldn't you be on social media for that? It doesn't, exist. It, it doesn't exist without social media anymore. Right. You have to have it. Right. And, and I, so, I wasn't on, so I wasn't really on social media until I started the podcast with my brother. Mm-hmm. Until we started that podcast, that's when, I, that's when I got on social media. And then it began to consume my life mm-hmm. because you're getting notifications constantly and you have to respond because you want to be, you want to be engaged with your listeners right. if you have a podcast. And it's one of the big things is being engaged with your listeners, right? Yeah. And so then you're always engaged because you're getting bling, bling, bling mm-hmm. all the time. It's that, um, oh, shoot, dopamine. It? yes, yes. It's the release of dopamine. So watching that, since watching that, I've been super self-conscious about <laughs> uh, how much social media I'm looking at. Like if I start catching myself scrolling, if I'm spending more than five to 10 minutes on the toilet, and it's just scrolling through social media. Like <laughs> I, I'm so much more self-conscious of what I'm doing on, on my phone now since I've watched it. And I think people should watch it, especially those that aren't really aware of, man, the whole part on algorithms, just like, Oh, it's, it's just insane. I um, like the part where they said, never watch the suggested video. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, unless it's my suggested video. <laughs> then watch away. Yeah. I don't care what it does to your psyche. Just, just your, yeah, just your video. Going on, going on to the point of, of kids having social media, I completely agree with you. Uh, it's, it's, I didn't have my first cell phone until I was 16, until I got my license. I think I was 18. It, it's scary thinking that people are buying their kids um, phones, cell phones. I mean, really, you don't even need a cell phone now to get on social media. I mean, you can obviously get on your computer and do it, or you can, you know, they have like uh, uh, Kindle Fires and whatnot that can get onto social media. Any any kind of smart device is able to get. I can get on, on social media on my TV. Yeah. The idea of my daughter being on social media at the age of 10, which seems like what most kids are, are getting these devices at now, is terrifying for her to have an account on there. There's, there's so much that goes on there. The, the people that are on there, the people that she can come in contact with, the stuff that she can be exposed to, and not to mention at a young age being so absorbed into it, it's just a, it's a terrifying thought. Yeah, we have a friend, a mutual friend, Foggin. His daughter has a phone. He got his daughter a phone because he wanted her to be able to call him anytime, any place, anywhere. Yeah. And I, I get that. I get that concept in the world we live in, feeling, feeling worried about the safety of your children and wanting them to be able to contact you. I, on the other hand, am not ready for that. Mm-mm. I'm not ready for it. And, but social media is so far off. I'm thinking 16 for social media. Right, at least. Yeah, I'm at least sixteen. It can because it, that can crush their self esteem too. Yeah, no, that's the thing is that everybody Instagram is just about your best life, right? It's not real life; it's your best life. And people, you know, people don't even look the same in person as they do on social media. And oh. people like, or on Facebook, I've seen I've seen things where it's like, "Calm down, I know you in real life." Yeah, you know, people based on people based on what people post, saying. I know that's not that's not your real life. It's not your real relationship. It's not your real marriage. It's not your real job. It's not your real whatever. It's fake. It's fake for a lot of people. Now, for me, I post real stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's part of what <laughs> that's part of what I do is that I post real stuff. Uh, for good or for bad, uh, I post real stuff. But there's so much out there that makes you feel bad. They're talking. They call it now um, Instagram dysmorphia. Oh, I don't think I've like body dysmorphia is where you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't see a real representation of what is actually there. Mm -hmm. and, you, and so you're always looking to try to improve and change. People do that with all kinds of different things. Some people do it surgically. Some people just do right. it with diet and exercise. Um, but now it's Instagram induced because they're looking at Instagram and they're seeing guys with all these muscles and girls with all these curves and they want to be what that they person. see. Yeah. And it's not real because of no. filter, because of Photoshop, because of, you know, it's just not real. And like, you know, you can take a picture and we all know the difference. Like we all know <laughs> the angle makes a huge exactly. difference. The angle makes exactly. a huge difference. You could it's be, not, you could be a, <laughs> Uh, you can what? Be a morbidly <laughs> obese person. Yeah. Someone very unhealthy, and yet you could look like a movie star with the right angle, the right lighting, and the right filter. Yeah. Yep. And only from the neck up. Right. So it, yeah, it's it's all it's all interesting. Um, but it's I, more than interesting, like you said, when you have kids, because being a parent means you've got to make these kinds of decisions. And at some point, my kids are going to want. They already want cell phones. I told them they could get one when they're 31. They're like, all right, you promised. You promised when I'm 31, I get to have a phone. And then I think, like, you know, it took them a couple of years before they realized that that was ridiculous. That's a long story. time, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they realized that. But there's going to come a point where we're going to have a struggle about social media. And for right. me, being divorced, it's going to be a, a combination between their mom and me on what is allowed. It's something we haven't discussed, but I think we have the same opinions about that kind of stuff. Well, that's that's reassuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 fortunate that way. Yeah. So you mentioned about being real on social media and social and let's Instagram is the uh, I forget what was the word you used. Uh, Instagram dysmorphia. No, well, it was about how everybody's their best self, or it's all fake. Um, yeah. I know. My parents, they went off on social media. They were on Instagram. I think mom's still on there, but they're living in a difficult situation in their life right now. They're dealing with physical illness um, on my dad, with my dad. And, uh, you know, for someone that is dealing with such a difficult thing in life right now and then logging on to social media to see everybody <laughs> uh, just living their best life or, you know, always happy and happy and yeah and yeah it just it crushes them and and that's another spectrum of social media for people that you know are, are having a hard time to see i mean if, if i don't yeah you know it's it is people don't realize that it's, it can be hard like if you're it can be hard like yeah if, you, if you're missing something yeah and you get on and like, you know, if you're hungry and you get on Instagram and everybody's eating, now you're starving, right? Yeah. It's one thing to know that there are people eating. It's another thing to see people eating when yeah. you're hungry. Um, but I know for, I, I want to say that social media is not all bad either. Because I know for my mom, she's been able to connect with people that she grew up with, people that she's yeah. lived hundreds, if not thousands of miles away from for decades, being, been able to reconnect with them, especially since my dad passed. And that's been good for her. It's been good for her. It's been good for her to stay in contact with um, me and my brother, which is not such a big deal now because, we're, you know, she lives with me and my brother right. doesn't live far away. Um, but there are lots of people who, where there are benefits to it. It's just the management of it and the, and the expectations of it, I think. And then realizing yourself and knowing your situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of people don't. I, I, you, you pulled out a, a good point for social media as far as reconnecting with people. And there was uh, my, my brother, one of his best friends growing up. Um, I hadn't seen him in 20 years. Johnson? No. <laughs> Although I found him. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, his close friends in Maryland. I just searched his name on Instagram, found him. 
I'm super excited that you were able to watch that last night. I don't, I didn't see your tweet. I didn't see anything, any indication that you watched the social dilemma. And, and I don't know why I wanted to talk about that, but other than the fact that I thought it might be something that you would be interested in seeing and I wanted to know your opinion on it, which I got. So I guess the, that kind of worked out perfectly. Um, Brandon, thank you so much for coming back on here on the parent quest. Um, if you want, shout out your your plugs. You got any anything coming up for Raspberry Voice Kids? Where can people find you? Where can people listen to you and, and see your lovely face? So we do Raspberry Voice Kids everywhere. So if you look, anywhere you look, it's Raspberry Voice Kids, at Raspberry Voice Kids on Twitter, on Instagram, Raspberry Voice Kids podcast on Facebook. Um, since we hate social media so much, I thought I'd give you all the socials first. <laughs> and any place you listen to podcasts, we're on. So Stitcher, um, Anchor, iTunes, all that stuff. We're everywhere. Spotify, check us out, Raspy Voice Kids, the Raspy Voice Kids podcast. You can check us out, listen to us. Nothing special coming up except for every week we do a pop culture seg- segment, and I think I want to talk about the social dilemma as our pop culture segment for this week. Um, and last week, or a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, relationship turnoffs. <laughs> That was good. Got a lot of reaction out of that one. <laughs> and uh, deal breakers is what we called it, deal breakers. Um, but we're always talking about pop culture things. So you don't have to like sports to like our podcast. You certainly don't have to like WVU to like our podcast. If you love WVU, you'll love our podcast. So check us out, Raspy Voice Kids. Uh, that was well-worded. I, and I think for most of the listeners here, no, I don't really care for sports that much in general. I just – I don't – I've never picked up interest on them. But – your pop culture segments are gold. They are hilarious. Uh, usually, usually spot on. Uh, usually, uh, Toy Story is better than Lion King, hundred percent. That's what I said. Yeah. Jeremy disagrees. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming on, and I can't wait to have you back on in the future sometime. All right, man. We'll yeah. do it.